question around this, the SSP, the supply side platform. Uh, how, how has it changed over the last 12 months? I think in the, in the UK, what, what happened um, initially is we, we had platforms come in that, that were, were labelled supply side platforms and they're, they're remnant partners. So what, what we had is platforms come in, um, address or, or, or amplify a need in the market, which was the remnant or the unsold solution. Publishers were then able to pass to this partner for a, um, a fee and the partner would monetize. So it was, it was a, a monetization model rather than a value model. Okay, and then, and then we're now getting to a point where platforms are evolving, businesses are evolving, the market's evolving. So where do you think that kind of SSP model, it might not even be called an SSP in 12 years' yeah. time, but where do you think that is going to move to in the next year, two years? It's, it's, it's an absolute value proposition. So what, what we have is we've got the content creators haven't really changed that much, but the, the, the market around them is whirring at, at a hell of a rate of knots. So what the, the, the SSP proposition, um, Pubmatic, we, we, we're a strategic selling platform. It's, it's a play on the acronym, but it's, it's, we're, we're a value partner. So we're an ad tech partner. So what we do is we enable the publisher to keep focused on what they need to be focused on, which is creating content for consumption um, and user retention. And we allow the, the, the publisher to interact with how the market is changing and evolving so they can stay focused and wear that layer. So, so it's not really, so it's not a platform designed necessarily for Remnant, but it's also just the, platform design for all types of sales. Yeah, we're not, we're, not, we've, we're not in any way focused on Remnant. Remnant's the problem, um, and Remnant's the, the, the spin-off for what occurs through through the user session. So it's it's not about let's monetize or increase the sell-through rate or the, the pennies in the eCPM of the Remnant. It's to look at where within that user session there are opportunities to sell directly to an agency. So rather than a yeah. bottom-up approach, it's a top-down approach. We're pulling inventory back up towards a high value. I guess that kind of brings us on to what you're going to whiteboard yeah. today, which is how you change the way that publishers have been kind of classifying this yeah. inventory in this kind of funnel model. Yeah, of course. So, do, do so, so the, 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 standard, the standard model that, that we all know um, in, our, in, in the industry is, you know, we've got the, the pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is the, the agency business. In the, in the middle of the, the user session, that's where we have direct response um, through ad nets, and the like, and, and down here, this is typically the unsold. And, and this is the ground that initially, as we spoke before, that um, to, up to a year ago, um, that what were called SSPs filled. So, and when you say agency, just for clarity for people watching, you mean that this is just the, the direct ad deals being done between publisher and agency. That's right, yeah, so it's direct sales. And then, and then the middle bit was where it was all being then given to kind of the performance ad networks, yeah. and anything that left over was RTB, but then over time, I guess that has been moving further up that funnel. That's right. But um, Yeah, so this is, the, this is the guaranteed portion of the campaigns that are running, and this is the, the non-guaranteed yeah. down here. Yeah. So what, what we've, what, what we're looking at um, is, is, is the model and how it sits. So if we look at, if, if this is the number of impressions or the impression count in any given user session, and this is the time of the user session here, obviously the, the, the impressions go like that. This triangle here that's normally been used in the industry, it, it, it essentially serves out in this form here. So we have the... I'll just direct, direct stuff further in there. Yeah, direct, direct stuff is um, early in the user session. Um, the direct response and then the unsolds here. So that, that's that's essentially just a that's that's a, a CPM driven yep. ego system. So the higher the CPM or who it's being sold to dictates where within the user session that, that And you call it you call it an egotism ego system, sorry. That's right. Because it, it's just assuming that early on the user session is the most valuable That's issue. right. And, and, and the most valuable by how IOs are written, so there's nothing current about it. So from the, the date the IO is signed, the, the campaign is predisposed to sit right here within, within the, the campaign waterfall at the yeah. publisher, within the publisher ad scene. Okay, so how, how should it be done differently, I guess? So what, what this, what this is t isn't taking into account is anything that's occurring post-insertion order signing. So if this deal was done in January, that means that early in the user session, if it's a three month campaign, it's gonna run for three months. It's not taking into account anything that's happened between the date of the insertion order signing and the date of the campaign running. 
through the longevity of the campaign. It's still high value, yep. but is it the highest value that's available when that oppression is being served back to the publisher? Okay. So what, what, what the, the, the ecosystem has to incorporate is as these, as these ads are being served early in the user session, are they the best value add back to the publisher that can be served? So are, are there, is there any room or um, flexibility in how those campaigns are being served? So, so you're suggesting that the direct deals don't necessarily have to be set, so served in this part of the user session, it could be further down that chain? Absolutely. If, if, a campaign's, if we've got a campaign that's been sold to an agency directly and it's to be called right in here at the start of the user session and the campaign is pacing ahead of schedule, then why would a publisher need to serve that ad? The, the, the campaign's pacing ahead, performance might be really high, performance metric might be above the KPI they're looking for, so that there exists an opportunity for a publisher to look at what am I monetizing where within that user session from a campaign specific basis. But also think, I guess in the publisher's head, particularly from an adult's perspective, it's been easy this way, right? Mm. Because in terms of ad server kind of priority calls yeah. to say, direct stuff, let's make it priority one, two, and three. Yeah. Anything else comes four, five, and six. And it's just been easy. And it's been easy to manage campaigns doing it this, session, yeah. this way. But there's, a, I guess what you're trying to say, is a big opportunity by flipping that model. Yeah, the, it, it, it should be served on a who pays most gets um, early in the user session, or there might be other sort of non-fiscal reasons why campaigns are served. Yeah. But what it's, it's not taking into account um, is what of higher value is available in the market right now. Right. So yes, they, 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 this, this campaign is paying more than that campaign, more than that campaign, more than that campaign, the waterfall that you've just suggested, but the other factors influence when campaigns are served, such as salespeople going in and haranguing ad ops guys, you know, I need my campaign to be served a bit earlier because X, Y, and Z is on it. So we've got people influencing yep. business decisions. Yep. And so they can be arbitrary decisions taken, which are, whilst locally in the best interest of the business, holistically are they? Right. So that there's, no, there's no holistic mapping of, of, of the market yeah. to what's going on within the ad server, because the ad server can be moved about, campaign priorities can be changed based on, on a number of influences. Okay. So, and you're also, going to, you're also going to whiteboard for us as well the, the opportunity around, I guess, what we're now calling programmatic premium or programmatic guaranteed or yeah. whatever kind of term we all agree to use at some point. But, uh, there's a way to start building that into this kind of model as well, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's complementary to it. It's not, it's not replacing this in any way, shape or form. This is a standard model um, and it, it absolutely works, but it, it, because it has worked and it does work, doesn't mean it's the best. Yeah. You know, it's, it's in any, any form of evolution, you know, things, things always work absolutely fine. Like uh, an, old, an old brick phone still is great for making phone calls, but it's not a smartphone. Yeah. So why would you go with that when you can have that? Um, and, and obviously there's risk and reward, um, especially when we're talking ad serving and businesses. Okay. So to move on to, to what, what, we, what we term as a holistic ecosystem, yep. um, we, we, we implement what we call unified optimization. Um, and unified optimization, basically, um, we have the, the, the Pubmatic platform is API into the publisher ad server. Yep. So when a user lands on the publisher's site, the, the publisher calls our tags. Our, and so what we have happening there is two things occurring in synchronicity. We have the, the Pubmatic tags are being called and we also have through the API into our platform, we have deal management running and we have brand control running at the same time. So once, once, once the, the, the tags are being called, we perform this, the, the cookie sync out to market from all the demand sources. Yep. And so we get all those unfiltered demand sources come back in. We then run a unified auction. So we're able to, to address every, every piece or every opportunity that's coming from the demand side. And we then evaluate, okay, that, that impression, that fits. It's then run against the deal management. So we look at the campaign that was going to be served okay. into the publisher's website. And we, just to be clear, when you say deal management, you don't mean deal IDs and things that have been being orchestrated from the demand side. It's more deal management, literally the insertion orders that I've already... That's right. In it, 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 the, 
there is a line down here. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is we pull through <coughs> to the API. The deal management speaks to what the publisher has sold, how, how the campaign is pacing, what price is being set in there, yeah. um, in, in any number of factors, but they're all publisher-defined factors. We obviously talk them through. We, we ensure that these are locked in through the API and the brand control measures. So the, the unfiltered responses come into the platform. We then filter the responses based on the deal management. So if that campaign that was going to be served is pacing ahead and its performance is absolutely fine, then we can look at that opportunity that's come in there and we can start filtering the opportunities that come in. Yep. We then run the brand control parameters that are set by the publishers against the campaign that has been through the auction and we've gone, that campaign's good to go. If, if this campaign is then selected based on the publisher's parameters, we serve that ad through to the publisher site through our own tags. If, any, if anything interrupts the flow here, the, yep. the, that campaign has to be served, it doesn't hit the floor, the publisher then serves directly their own campaign into it. So what, what we then have is we have the ability of the market to insert a campaign into what the publisher previously described as premium when there's the opportunity to do so. So yeah. what we're not doing is we're not fixating down the bottom end of the user session where it's remnant or unsold. We're taking opportunity to move an impression. If we're just looking straight at the value side of it, we're taking what would have been a low value impression that was sold through programmatic and it's moved further up the user session because the market has defined the price of the opportunity that they're willing to pay. And it's not even just maximizing the I guess, uh, pricing efficiencies for publishers, it's also going to the advertiser to say, you know, the, the, the number of campaign analytics that are now at, at the hands of publishers, they must be at a position to say, well, I've got a campaign that I previously served up here because it was easy to schedule, easy to manage, wasn't very hard. Yeah. But based on a, a plethora of campaign analytics saying, well, actually, that campaign that's a direct deal or premium campaign it actually was made more sense to serve it further than a funnel. That's right. So, so there has to be a bit more adaptability, I guess, on the publisher side as well. And, so, and, and basically, what, what the publisher is allowing to happen is, 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 is really just three things. They're allowing the real-time value of that opportunity to be seen, addressed, and potentially realised. Yep. They're able to allow the market to append user data to that impression because when, when this deal was signed that was originally done, that might have been 14 days ago, that user between the, the campaign being signed and the opportunity being, being presented on the site, the value of the user can change exponentially based on the user behaviour. Yes. The orthodox model of ad serving or you know, deal management doesn't take into account any real time at all. So it doesn't take into account the real-time true value of that user to an agency that has decided to trade programmatically rather than orthodox through an insertion order, that real-time value is based on user data yeah. and I suppose lastly, it might be the same user, but it's a historic value. It's a historic value based on how this campaign was sold through the orthodox me method rather than these guys out in the market, the, the demand side, the agency trading desks, the demand side platforms, the independent trading desks, ad networks that, yeah. that, that, that have a bidder and are incredibly savvy, it allows the publisher to realise at the same time what have they sold from an orthodox fashion, a traditional method, and then what does the market value that impression at. Yeah. So the, the publisher decides what can come through the platform, we don't decide, the publisher sets the parameters for brand control, and the terms for the deal management, all my campaigns need to do do or be X, Y, and Z. If we fulfill that, the, the, the publisher is then able to realize the value of that opportunity in real time to the market. I mean, you're seeing this incre increasingly close relationship between you know, the ad server and the monetization selling platform. At what point do they, they, they all have their own distinct features and capabilities, but at what point do they start becoming one and the same thing? Do you think that there will be a point where, so let's take DFP for instance, yeah, and course. then they're integrating further and closer into AdMeld and the Google Analytics and so forth. Do you think that that becomes a more viable proposition for, for publishers, or do you think there's still a lot more flexibility they're going to have by another platform that's 
really closely connected to it. I think there's there's a, f a lot more plate spinning than that. So you've got you've got tactical plates, and then you've got strategic plates. So for, at purely the tactical level, absolutely, you know, you you have the the DFP uh, server and the, the, the whole heap of rudimentary ad servers that are now trying to catch up because of ad technology companies are coming in with sophisticated offerings, so DFP has to increase its game. And then you've got other ad serving companies such as Switch Concepts that are right at the forefront of ad serving ability that we speak very closely with um, at a server to server level. So it's it's what what this allows to happen is the publisher to stop worrying, or uh, worrying is probably the wrong word, but stop fixating outside of what they're, they're exceptionally good at, which is the content creation and user consumption of that content. Yep. So with, with Pubmatic being an independent ad technology company, what we're able to do is work with publishers across all of their digital assets. So this doesn't just occur on web, but we're building this into our mobile offer and it, it does exist in our tablet offer, so it's all their digital assets. Yep. When you look at the likes of DFP, that, that, that is a, a one-to-many ad-serving solution, so it doesn't allow for that sophistication at a granular level on a per-publisher basis. Okay. And that's, that's where we're very fortunate in being independent. We're purely driven by increasing the value of every single impression to our yeah. publishers. And, and from, a, from a publisher perspective, is if, if it remains green, then there's no, there's no incremental cost to a publisher. So if they just keep serving their ads, the market either doesn't pass the deal management because they're not pacing ahead and everything's fine, then, then it just keeps on chunking away. It's absolutely fine. It's those opportunities, those nuggets of opportunities yeah. that the publisher can then realise the market value for that impression. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Well, um, you know, it's, it's pretty compelling to say you know, that this, is, this feels completely rudimentary and, mm. and, and, and pretty subjective to whoever's executing that strategy as well, whereas this feels a little bit more scientific and mathematical. And, uh, yeah, it, it, and what, what this takes into account is the, the long-term needs of a publisher rather than, okay, this is what we're doing here and now, we're, we're serving out campaigns, which is absolutely fine, and, and publishers can do it, but the amount of clutter and noise in the market is, is pulling the publisher's attention yeah. and their, their focus away from what they should be doing. And that is looking at how their users are consuming their content and building their business out for, um, linearly. So they're, they're able to go from web, okay, now we're now able to focus on what we're doing on the mobile side, the tablet side. Yeah. And what we do is we allow them to monetize better the opportunities through that, 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 that transitioning consumption yeah, of sense. content. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in today, Gav, and taking us through that. It's been a pretty enlightening as well. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Cheers. And uh, thank you for tuning in to this week's Trade Talk TV. Mm -hmm.